Welcome back to an RPG Architect tutorial. Today we're going to adjust the move speed of the main character. We're also going to create our first NPC entity, which are similar to RPG Maker events. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so now when we open up RPG Architect, the last project that we were using automatically loads up. So that's really nice. Now, the first thing I wanna change is the movement speed. If you can see, the base default speed is pretty slow, even on low resolution. So we're gonna change that first. So what we'll do is we'll hit F8, go to the database. We're going to just select our hero character, which is the first thing that pops up. And we have a thing down here called traits. Now this is where we're going to add, adjust our speed basically. So we're gonna click this green plus arrow to add. And we're going to select, there's a whole bunch of different traits, but the one that we want is physical properties. And then we want specifically the speed X. And then I'm gonna add another one, which is gonna be the same thing, but it's gonna be for speed Z. Now. What this is, is on a 2D plane, your X and your Z are actually what you think of as your X or your Y on RPG Maker, for instance. The Y is actually, on in a 3D engine, is your actual height. So you're up and down height-wise. And so the speed that we want is the X and the Z. I'm going to increase them by 300%. And then we're going to play test. And the speed should be a whole lot better. There we go. All right, with the speed adjusted, let's make our first NPC. And in order to do that, we're gonna click on this entity icon. And entities are like RPG Maker events or other game engine objects. And that's how we're going to basically place interactable things on the map. So with that selected, I'm just gonna double click on a grid and it's going to pop up the entity window. All right, so this direction window was popped open, but you can see that you can set directions. This is for eight directions, so that's pretty nice. For instance, south is selected, so I'm just gonna leave it at south. So we have a couple things. This is where we would name the entity, so we'll just name this NPC. This is the uh, script name. This is where you would name the script. And by that, I mean right over here is where your script is. So if this would be, say, let's say page one script, and then if we wanted to add another page, then we would click it, and this would be page two. Okay, so you can kind of see that scripts are the equivalent of RPG Maker event pages. And that's basically why I named it page one and two so that this would make more sense to the RPG Maker user. And you can see that these are the conditions that are going to be for each page. Now, the one thing to consider is that these pages or scripts, they're sort of opposite of how RPG Maker handles them. RPG Maker has tabs right here and the farther right you go, the more priority they have. So if the condition is true, it's gonna to go to the farther right always. This one's kind of the opposite where the top one, even though it's a different direction, I guess, but the top one is going to have the most priority if the condition is true. So in this case where page one and page two have no conditions, page one would be running. All right, so now that we understand the scripts, I'll just get rid of this page two. We don't really need it for this tutorial. We won't have any conditions, but if you do click the plus button, you can add switches, both local, global, and also variables. And if you select a variable, you have access to a bunch of different operators compared to like an RPG Maker event condition where I believe it's only like greater than, or it's looking for a specific type of operator. So this is pretty nice, but we don't, again, we don't need uh, conditions for this one. All right, so you can also see there's a bunch of options over here. And basically what they say is what they do. But one thing we need for an NPC is a model. So we're gonna add a sprite to it. So you can see that we can start selecting from the characters folder. And for instance, this is our hero currently. And again, as long as it's set up like RPG Maker, and by RPG Maker, what I mean is that you have a down facing on the top row, left facing on this row, right facing on this row, up facing on this row. You have your idols in the middle, and then you have your two walking animations right here. And that way, when you're walking, it just jigsaws kind of bounces between these. But you'll have your idol, and then you're walking on the sides. And if you have that kind of a setup, the sprite sheet is gonna be very easy to set up. So we don't have the exact character that I want for the NPC. And again, if we want to add something, we have to go into our uh, sheet that we want. So I'll just use this green thing and I'm gonna copy it. And then in my RPGA project folder, contents, characters, I'm going to add this NPC here. And then you can name it whatever you want, but I'll just leave it as it is. We can add in these, this character three, hit okay and hit okay. And now that's our entity on the map. So if we play test this right now, we could see this entity and there we go. And it has collision and everything. 
All right, so going back into the entity, we can double click into it and we can just start playing around with this. So we could add some movement here. We can add some, let's just say some random. Its speed is gonna be one. We know that that's a little slower, but for an NPC, that's fine. Now the delay is in milliseconds. And so for every second, that's a thousand basically. So if we want it to stop for two seconds, we would put 2000 milliseconds, hit okay. And then we can watch this entity start to walk. And so there it goes, it does its walking animation. It walks for a second and then it pauses for two seconds and it's just walking randomly. Here's the outside of our map. All right, so now we're gonna make this entity interact. And so I'm gonna double click into it and I'm going to turn its movement off here. And then I'm gonna look over here on the right and we have the script area. These are basically event commands like an RPG maker. And these are what is going to be run when you actually trigger the entity. So you can right click in this highlighted area and you can select from a bunch of different commands that you can use. And we're gonna get into these, but first I wanna show you where the trigger area is. And that's over here with interactions. So these are very RPG Maker like as well. The default one is that player presses an action button to interact with this thing. There's also one for touching when the player touches the entity, entity touches the player, entity touches the entity, and then there's an automatic one. Now, the cool thing about these is you can have multiple of them, but we're just gonna use this one for simplicity. So yeah, the basic thing to realize if you're new to RPG Maker events is that you need a condition to bring the event page to light, meaning that this is what will happen and then what will trigger it to run the commands over here. That's kind of how you have to think about this. So now we have a player action button and I'm gonna go over here now and add a runtime action. One simple one that you can do to test is scene exit game. And so we can test if this works. And we'll play test. And if I go and talk to that NPC, you can see that it runs that logic. So I hope this video was helpful. Like, subscribe if you wanna see more RPG Architect content. Consider donating Patreon, help support the channel. Any questions, comments below, Steam forms, get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.